So, you want to shoot narrowband, eh? No, seriously, you want to shoot narrowband, right? Well, today we're going to be talking about narrowband imaging because maybe you want to get pictures like this. Pretty cool, right? And you can do this too. So today we're going to be talking about narrowband imaging what it is, what type of cameras you can use, what type of filters you need, and how to channel map your data after you get them stacked and ready to go. So with that, let's get this. What is narrowband imaging? Well, first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm going to have to read this off my phone what I wrote because I'm pretty sure I can't remember this all. So here we go. As it pertains to astrophotography, it is capturing specific wavelengths or frequencies of light with special filters that isolate a specific gas that glows or emits light in those specific frequencies within deep space nebulae. See? That is a lot to remember. <laughs> the three most common frequencies we capture are hydrogen alpha that emits at 656 nanometers, sulfur 2 at 672 nanometers, oxygen 3 at 500 nanometers. There are filters made within those specific frequencies. But one thing to note is, within those specific frequencies, there are a range of band passes that you need to pay attention to. And those band passes will range from 3 nanometers all the way on up. So for instance, you have a hydrogen alpha filter that captures a 656 nanometer wavelength, but it has different band passes such as a 12 nanometer bandpass, a 6 nanometer bandpass, and say a 3 nanometer bandpass. The 12 nanometer bandpass at that specific frequency is a wider bandpass and will allow you to capture more light. The 3 nanometer bandpass is going to be a lot narrower, narrower. <laughs> it will capture less light for you and will require longer exposures. A question you might be asking yourself is, why wouldn't you want to go with a wider bandpass if it lets in more light? Well, there's a few trade-offs there. The narrower bandpass, or the three nanometer bandpass, or even the six nanometer bandpass, is going to give you more contrast and more separation in the gases that you do capture. So when you capture your hydrogen alpha, your sulfur 2 and your oxygen 3, you'll notice at the more narrower, narrower band passes, uh, there will be more contrast and separation between them in your photo. There are certain advantages to owning both a narrow band pass and also a wide band pass. Your wide band pass filter should be used on very faint nebulae. Depending on your equipment, it may help you get the exposure that you're looking for. Now that you're more familiar with narrowband, let's talk about some of the cameras you might be using for imaging. The first one I'm going to show you is the monochrome camera, and this is going to be the most sensitive. The second one is what astrophotographers refer to as a one-shot color, and you may have seen one before. This is a DSLR. You can also get a one-shot color in astroform, but they won't be as sensitive as, say, a monochrome camera. This is because the one-shot color has small filters placed on top of the sensor that divides the light up into red, green, and blue. Since we're shooting narrowband and only capturing one specific wavelength of light, and the one-shot color sensor is divided into different colors, this means when shooting with a one-shot color for narrowband, you'd be only using a small portion of the sensor. That being said, there are different filters made for these two types of cameras. Let's go talk about them. First, let's talk about the color filters, specifically for the DSLR and mirrorless cameras. Before you can shoot narrowband with them, you're going to need to modify the camera. This involves tearing down the camera to the bare sensor. That is because these cameras have a special filter that blocks the very wavelengths of light we're trying to capture with them. Removing this filter allows a camera to record in full spectrum, which will enable it to shoot in narrowband. You can try to do it yourself, but there are quite a few shops out there that will do this for you. If you have a color astrocam, no modification is necessary. One-shot color cameras have many options for filters. You can purchase a clip-in filter for your specific camera, like this one, 
The only downside of that is if you get a different camera later down the road, you can't use it with that camera. However, if you are more camera lens based, then these type of filters will be ideal for you. If you have a telescope, you can get a screw-in filter, which sometimes will be able to be installed inside the telescope or through a filter drawer or also a filter wheel. Both styles of filters pictured here are single band filters. Remember, your one-shot color camera will be less sensitive to these filters because these filters will only activate a small portion of pixels on the camera sensor. The best option for one-shot color cameras are the multi-band filters. These filters include all of the narrow band passes, hydrogen alpha, sulfur 2, and also oxygen 3, all in one filter. This is ideal because it'll capture all your data all at once, utilizing all the pixels on your sensor. This still won't be as sensitive as a monochrome camera, but if you have limited dark sky time, the advantage of getting all of your data all at once in full color is an amazing option. And now the monochrome filters. Monochrome filters are all single pass filters. This is because a monochrome astrocam will only record in black and white. That means shooting with a single pass filter on a monochrome camera will utilize 100% of the sensor 100% of the time. The only downside to this is your imaging time will be longer to produce a color image from monochrome data because you would need to shoot through multiple filters to create a color image. But the amount of signal that you can pull through a monochrome camera is simply amazing. So how do you create a color photo from monochrome data? Well, I'm so glad you asked because I'm going to show you right here. Just so we're on the same page, guys. If you have a one-shot color camera, you're not going to need to do this process. But this is one of the advantages of shooting monochrome because you can channel map it however you like. The color palette I'm going to show you, or channel mapping I'm going to show you, is the Hubble palette. The Hubble palette consists of channel mapping sulfur to red, hydrogen to green, and then oxygen to blue. Here's how you do that. First, you want to create a new document the same size as your image. Here it is. Then you want to make sure that it's in RGB color, otherwise it just won't work. It says gray here, so I'm going to need to convert it to RGB. And how you do that is you go up to Image, Mode, and then select RGB. Then you want to select red, then go over to your sulfur data, select it by hitting Control A if you're on Windows. For me it's Macintosh, so I have to hit Command A, then Command C to copy, it's Control C for Windows, then go back to your new document then paste it into the red tab by hitting Control V or Command V for Macintosh. Okay, we have sulfur to red now. Then you want to go over to your hydrogen data, do it the same way, select it, copy it, go back to your new document, paste it to green, Then do it one more time with the oxygen data. Select it, copy it, and then paste it into the blue channel. With all of our data now mapped, all you have to do is hit RGB color and it will become a color photo. Just like that. From here, you're just going to you're just going to edit the photo just how you would a normal photo. Now you can you can play around with the channel mapping now that you know how to do that. My favorite channel map or color palette is HSO, where I map hydrogen to red, sulfur to green, and then oxygen to blue. But there are many different combinations. Feel free to experiment. This is part of astrophotography that is really exciting because you can make it 
whatever you want. Hopefully this gives you a foundation of what narrowband imaging is and what it takes to do narrowband imaging. So I guess that's it for this one, guys. And I guess I'll see you in the next. Peace. <laughs>